My next guest up tonight, he's known all over the world for his famous artwork. He's a fantasy artist, and he's sitting with me right now. Let's give it up for Ken Kelly. Thank you very much. Kenny, how are you? I'm good, man. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Good to nice see to you. you. It's good to see you at my show. I always see you at the Chiller Expo or the Kiss Expo or the Kiss Conventions ever since I've been a kid. I've been to all of them, all of them. I've been to Chiller and, and the Kiss Convention for at least 20 years. And you know what's cool before we get started, since we went into that? This, <laughs> this is a book years ago, for one of them from the Kiss Expo, okay? And my band NYB used to play, but on the back cover is uh, Ken Kelly, where one of, the, uh, where one of the pictures he did was Love Gun with Kiss. And then NYB is over here. So I saw this the other day, and I'm like, wow. Whoever knew, even years later, I'd be doing a show, and then I'd have Ken Kelly on the show. Incredible! I'm a big, big Kiss fan. It, it, it ties it ties itself together. That's the first time I've seen that, though. And first this is going home that. with you, because I, I always take a bunch of these things every, and I save Thank them you. and I give them out. Thank you. I'll take it. I, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Good. Now listen, you you were born in New London, Connecticut, and you moved to Brooklyn. Where'd you go after that? Long Island. And that's where you've been ever since. That's it. Two and places: my parents' house, and I bought a house with the KISS money, uh -huh. and I'm, I'm still there. Now, what gave you the bug with, with, with the doing the artwork? I know you were always into art when you were a kid, and then you never really wanted to have a real job. How did it lead you into where you are today? I, uh, I've always had talent from, I guess, birth. It just comes with you, this particular talent, but it's up to you to, to cultivate it and make it work. Um, I never really took it seriously. I've had uh, all my teachers in school uh, try to get me to take it seriously to the point where I had one teacher go to college and would get jobs for me, bring it back to high school, I would do the job, she'd take it back to the college, get a paycheck, bring me the paycheck, give it to me, just to show me the complete, and I still never got it. Really? Because my uncle was in the military in a service that I liked, and that was predominant in my mind, so I wanted to do that. So I never took anything seriously, but once you got out of the military, you realize you're now an adult, you have no training in anything other than something you can't do anymore, and you um, have to find a, 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 a means to make a living. Luckily, uh, I had people in my family that were in, distantly in that business. Your where uncle, I, could I believe, right? My uncle, yeah. Frank Frazetta, his, uh, she's not actually my uncle, my, his wife, Ellie, is mm -hmm. my aunt, my okay. father's brother's sister. He's always been in my family, but uh, he was Uncle Frank. Yeah. He wasn't, you know, tell me something about art, tell me something about art. It was Uncle Frank. Then when I got out of the service, it was, now tell me something about art. And he never, he, he told me the basics, you have to learn how to draw and paint and come back and see me, which took a year. And I did, they came back to see me. And he sent me, I had a piece of work finished. I went to Europe where my wife is from, France. She's uh, French national. And when he told me to paint and draw, I couldn't make it work and paint and work and paint. So I said, I have to, uh, we sold everything I owned and uh, we took a plane over to her parents' house and I learned there. And when I had the, the piece of art and the world knows what my first piece is, I painted her with the building across the street in France that was behind the girl. It was a, a terror, whatever it was, a horror magazine thing. He said, that's good, take it in and give, give you the publisher's name. I went in. And that was the beginning, and I haven't stopped since. How old were you? Oh God, at the end of the Marine Corps, seven, 21. Okay. 21, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, so what 20, year are you looking at, late 60s? Was that? 68 I got okay. out. Yeah, 68. Tet, right after Tet I got out. So uh, I didn't want any more of that. So this was a whole nice, nice new way of making a living. But it's, it's, you do 20 years of hell if you're an artist. You're gonna, huh. you, you're go, it's tough for everyone here, any freelance person. It's a tough life, but it's a unique, fun life. It's yeah. like anything in the business or in the in the art, the music, acting. God. It could be overnight. It could be a couple of years. It could be 20 years. It absolutely. could be 30 years. You absolutely. might make it in your 50s or your 60s. Absolutely. I've, I've, I've told that to all the different bands that I've done covers for that they saw the kiss that went multi-platinum. Yeah, I want to hear about that whole story because ain't that the, the main... That's what made it. That's what blew it. How'd you come across with Gene Simmons and that whole... Well, the, the first part of the story, which leads to them, because that company... Let me hear this. ...that Frazetta sent me to, now he, he didn't tell me how to paint because he didn't want me to paint like him. He knew I would anyway because he was such a dominant figure. So my hard task was to... It's okay to look like him, but change your style so you, someone knows you're a different human being. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now I'm doing five years of horror covers, three a, three a weekend, I think I got. I'd go into the city by train, get them, come home. So I was ready to mass produce things and do it fast, and I was getting a lot of experience. So when the KISS people came to me, finally came to me, and they said, we want you to do a cover, and it's four abreast, and the guys are standing on... At first, it was a, a coming out of a building, and the building was on fire, and they were running at us, and we wanted them four abreast. I had just done five years of vigorous art, so I was ready to go, but I didn't even know it. So when they said, okay, put a rough together, I did. I went home, put a rough, they came back, and they loved it. And they said, do it, and I did. And everything, everyone loved it. It was great. It was brown. It was Kiss coming out of a building with fire behind them. And the parent company, Casablanca Records, rejected it. Really? <clears throat> Neil Bogart, the whole crew? The whole I, my life is over, my career is over now, I don't know, I'm going to go in the water. But they said, no, they love it, but they're too close to the building, mm -hmm. and they're going to look like a satanic group, so, and that's where I got my house. They said, we're going to do it again. And so I got paid twice. Well, you know what? Uh, not for nothing, yeah, and I'm not wonderful, just, wonderful. I'm not saying this just to blow smoke up here. I mean, <laughs> Kiss, Kiss was my favorite band, but my... Kiss is many people's favorite band. I bought Kiss, Al what did I get? Kiss Alive, and then I got... Rock and Roll, and then I got Destroyer. But Destroyer, that album cover, to this day, when I look at it, it brings me back. But it's such a beautiful, perfect, it brings Kiss to, to like, cartoon superhero stardom. They look great. That's a and I'll never forget, I love that. And then you did Love Gun, same thing. That they, They're larger than life. That's who Kiss is. The first band to uh, be living superheroes mm -hmm. and to complete the fantasy they needed a, a cartoonish comic cover. Yeah. So they had to have some kind of reality because it's real people, but it's got to be that touch of, of comic in it. And I tried, I had 30 days. You got 15 days to do a rough and 15 days to do the painting, and you hand it in, and there's your life, live or die. And that was all paint you did it with? All oil paint. Yeah, that's sick. Oil paint. That, that was. Fine uh, brushes and everything, I guess. <laughs> Super brushes fine. you couldn't even see <laughs> yeah. to get the eyeball, but you did it. You didn't. It's. Uh, I didn't appreciate Kiss at the time. I was um, Eagles and uh, yeah, Elton well John, was, and yeah. this was. The, I, I saw them in costume, and I never imagined guys with red lips, really red lipstick, and high heels and spandex would make it. No, a lot of people back then they were against them. No one gave uh, Kiss the time of day, right. even the radio stations. And al that album that you mentioned, Destroyed, did double platinum. Yeah, it blew up. Once Kiss the Alive came, world. that was it. The Destroyed. whole world. And then, and then everyone wanted me to work for him. For that. Until that day, no one. Then that day, then everyone. I mean, and rock, I haven't stopped since. Rock and Roll Over is a, is a great cover, too. Oh, yeah. But then once they did Love Gun, there's no, it's like Rock and Roll Over is in the middle of Destroyer and Love Gun. It's right. the artwork itself that's more detailed. It was two years between the Love Gun and from Destroyer to Love Gun. The first one, they were broke, and mm -hmm. we, they were in one building in Manhattan. The second one, I came back to do the second one, they were in this high rise, all of platinum, silver, and flowers. And, and I did a cover, a real background cover, a back alley thing, and uh, they, Gene actually stopped me. He said, Ken, we're, we're much bigger than that. Now, I had not followed <laughs> Kiss. I didn't know what they did in the two years. I didn't mm -hmm. know they made $100 million. And, what did I know? And back then they were putting out albums three every 18 months. That's unheard of. Nobody does that no more. No, but, but they told me, Gene actually said, Ken, we're bigger than that. You should put us on a bigger platform. And that's when I, I came back. As time goes on, you wind up working, working on a bunch of other major bands like Man of War. Man, God, I've done so many. Right? I, I've done Man, I've did 30 years of Man of War. I've done just about 95% of their covers. And um, Ace Freely. I did Ace's cover, I did Coheed and Cambria, Four Years Strong. There's so many bands that, 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 that you do covers for. Uh, Ace Freely, I just did his uh, Space Invader. I just did, um, well, I'm working with Peter on other things. But oh, are you? Still, cool. still all good, wonderful people. It's just they live in a different yeah. world completely. It's 100%. 100%. 100%. Now, let's get into some of the books. And... Uh, Conan the Barbarian. Did you create the character? You no, just so you, they told you to draw it. How did that work? Conan the Barbarian was created in the 1930s by a man named Robert E. Howard. Okay. And it was such unique writing, and it was so geared, so um, 
I guess, manly, vicious, and, and aggressive, and fighting, and he was a, a fantasy character from time immortal, way mm -hmm. back, and he fought dragons and all, and, and young men jumped onto this story, and it was from the 30s, so Frazetta did it first in the 60s, and then he, he didn't want to do it anymore, and they came to me, I said, you, you bet, I'd love to try it, and that's where my turn to uh, get aggressive, and, and you pick up, pick up an audience, yeah. Yeah, well, that was big. I remember all those paintings. Now, <laughs> when was the heavy metal magazine that you worked for? That was in the 70s? I did two or three for them. Uh, I, was, I, I was young when they came out. <coughs> I didn't do anything with the, young, with the early stuff. Okay. Kevin Eastman was at a convention with me, and Simon Beasley, another artist, and he was uh, talking to me and looking through my portfolio, saw a cover that was in there and told his, his editor, I, we have to have that on our cover. That's the first one. And just this last, within the last couple of months, I did another with Jesus Christ on the cross and zombies at his feet. I, I don't have no idea what the story's about. I don't have to, luckily. But, uh, uh, yeah, heavy metal, uh, God, I'm, I'm, I, I'm working for corporations, but Talk you have to sign a, a, a um, non-disclosure. Non -disclosure. Yeah. And I have like four major things coming out. Uh, things you use in your daily life well, good. that I can't take it. When it comes out, you come on. Now, do me a favor. Star Wars, that's another connection to you that, that certain people don't know about. 23 covers I did for, a, for George Lucas via Dark Horse Comics, and he owns 18 of them. He bought 18 of them. That was the best day of my wife's <laughs> life. When he sent the check, they sent... Uh, a brochure uh, from Tiffany's. Oh, yeah? Which I thought was very insulting. Because, <laughs> she, you know, she's, I mean, naturally she's going to get it. But uh, it was very successful uh, Star Wars campaign that we, we went on. Uh, I enjoyed it. And that's another thing, that the franchise went into the billions. Jesus, Jesus, the just, money. It's, it's going to be forever, just like Kiss. <laughs> now, before we uh, wrap you up in, in, in a couple of minutes, talk about some of these toy companies that you did work for. Oh, my God. I've worked for all of them. Everybody. Every toy company on the world. Hasbro, LJN. Uh, oh, my God. You, you caught me off guard with that. That's all right. Um, I just finished a uh, project for Hasbro that we're trying to uh, re- uh, pull the young guys back into the Micronauts, Little Toys, mm -hmm. and the magazine that they did along with the box cover is on eBay selling for seventy dollars. They normally sell for three. Okay. So I'm hoping it works for the company. It worked for me. It got me a lot, but I hope it works for the company that they get that young audience back and you know that that's that's what our job is. To I'm, sure, I'm sure. Well, anything that's good. Goes from generation to generation. Well, listen, it's almost your time. Why don't you get up and show our studio audience, our view, viewing audience, some of these beautiful pictures that you're drawing. All and, right. Uh, show us what you got up there. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, we got 50, we 50, go. going to 50. This is a uh, Santa Claus. It's a gory Santa Claus. It's from that first magazine company I worked for before Kiss. And they would give me, it was a couple of, of them a month. This is Santa Claus reaching into his bag of tricks, and it's someone's guts. And he's putting them in the uh, in the socks uh, above the fireplace. I thought that was hilarious. This is a Conan. This is what Conan does. He's in dire straits, just close to death, and you have to wonder how he's going to get out of it. And that's why they pick up the book. <coughs> My main character, Death's End. This is just a killer. He's he's a uh, can you use the word killer? B he's a badass, and everyone appreciates that fact. Young men do. Uh, more aggressive, more aggressive. His kiss, Love Gun, is uh, one of my Love Gun, uh, one of my kiss paintings. That went platinum. This is Man of War. This is Man of War. They are very aggressive, very um, heavy metal, cultish, hard rock, heavy yeah. metal. And they're, um, I, I've worked for them, like I said, for 30 years. This is something that was uh, originally did for my wife, and it's very popular. Ladies love it with the white. Lion, tigers, and she requested that, and I, she made sure I said that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and that's basically uh, the kind of work I do. Beautiful. Uh, now, listen, Ken. Where can people find you on social media if they want to reach out to you and check out some of your work? You're on social media, right? Facebook. I have people, my granddaughters help me with facial, social media, and it's very difficult because every go. now and then some adult stuff slips in, and 
then I have to come and get it out of there. <laughs> I have I have five granddaughters and they're very very uh, supportive. Good. Because uh, I don't know these. No, you uh, need that. You need the younger generation. Twitter and uh, stuff like I I don't get it. Don't. I'm not a Twitter guy, but I like Instagram. I like Facebook. See, I, I, I'm not. Nah, telephone is rough stuff for me. So. Well, Ken, it was, it's always a pleasure, and I hope to see you at the Chiller this year. All right, I will. All right. Best of health. Ken Kelly, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Order in my studio. All right, fantasy artist Ken Kelly. Check him out on the internet. Chiller Expo, Kiss Conventions, anywhere. Your local bar and grill, you'll see him there. <laughs>